Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be studying about cephalometrics and in that we will be studying about the Downs analysis. So in Downs analysis, we have certain skeletal parameters and we have certain dental parameters. So by skeletal parameters, I mean that we make certain measurements that involve the facial bone and by dental parameters, I mean that we make certain measurements that involve the teeth also. And to be precise, we measure five skeletal parameters and five dental parameters. And by the way, we call it the Downs analysis because it was a person named Down who studied around 20 individuals aged 12 to 17 years, 12 to 17 years, and he got these findings. That is why it is called as the Downs analysis. Anyways, let's move on. So first we'll study about the skeletal parameters. And the first parameter is the facial angle. This is the first parameter. To find this angle, let's draw a line between nasion and pogonion. So let us imagine two points. This point will be our nasion and this will be pogonion. Okay. We'll see where these points lie in this tracing in a while. But let's suppose we have two points here. This is the nasion. This is the pogonion. Also, we have two points. This would be the porion, porion, and this would be the orbital, orbital. Now, to find the facial angle, what we do? We join the nasion and pogonion, and we join the porion and the orbital. So, when we extend this, they'll meet somewhere, <laughs> infinity in this case, because this diagram is just an imagination. But when we draw here, these lines will meet somewhere and that will make the facial angle so nasion nasion is a point on the frontonasal suture so this is our frontal bone frontal bone this is our frontal bone and this is our nasal bone nasal bone and they join together at a suture so this is our suture this is the frontonasal suture so here we have a point that is the nasion and to be precise it is the most anterior point on this so we got our nasion here that is represented by the letter n and pogonion so pogonion is the most anterior point on the bony chin remember the word bony because chin could also be mistaken for this soft tissue chin so remember the word bony okay so this is the pogonion and we represent it by pog and then we have the porion so this is our external auditory meters so if i zoom in here this would be the upper margin so porion is the highest bony point highest bony point on the upper margin of the external auditory meters so it will be somewhere here and we name it as P. Orbital is the lowest point on the inferior bony margin of the orbit. So this is our orbit which holds the eyeball. So orbital, this is the orbital by represented by O. So our orbital is the lowest point on the inferior bony margin of the orbit. So we'll draw one line from the pogonion to the orbital. And one more line from the nasion to the pogonion. We see that they intersect here and they form an angle. This angle, this very angle is the facial angle. This is our facial angle. And the normal range is 82 to 95 degrees. And the average value, average value is 87.8 degrees so this is the value we find in the normal individuals now this angle it tells us that how anterior or how posterior our mandible is in relation to the upper face so this line this porion to orbital line it represents the upper face so this angle it represents how anterior or how posterior our mandible is in relation to the upper face now we'll consider two examples here. So I'm going to remove all these things to make things more clear. So we have two patients. One patient has class three. So the patient is somewhat like this. This is the class three case. So his mandible is positioned forward. So in this case, what will happen? Our angle will increase. Let's see how. 
this was our pogonion initially but now the pogonion shifted here okay so now when we join the nesion and the pogonion the nesion to the pogonion i'm drawing a dotted line just to avoid confusion so now we find that this angle is increasing this angle is increasing so our facial angle increases in class 3 cases in class 3 class 3 the facial angle will increase means it will be larger than this value okay now in class 2 patient this would be the case now our pogonion shifted to this position now when we join from the nasion to the pogonion our new our new pogonion so this will be the angle this will be the angle now this angle is decreased so we found that in class 2 patients the facial angle is decreased so by calculating this we are coming to a conclusion if the patient has class 2 or class 3 okay next up is the angle of convexity so this is our second parameter this is our second parameter again we'll draw two lines one is from the nasion to point a and one more will be from uh, point a let's suppose point a is here point a to pogonion to pog pogonion so we'll draw these two lines and we'll see where these points are here so nasion we already know this is our nasion and point a let me take a different color so this is the point a so point a is the deepest point in the midline between the anterior nasal spine this is our anterior nasal spine and this is the alveolar crest alveolar crest so as you can see it is midway it is between these two points so it is the deepest also deepest because it is posterior to these two okay so it is the deepest point in the midline between the anterior nasal spine and the alveolar crest between the two central incisors and this is also called as the subspinal let me find a space to write so subspinal sub oh uh -huh. sub spinal so sub means below and spinal refers to the a n s so it is below the Anus, that is why it is also called as a subspinal and we represent it as a so what we have to do we have to join the nasion and the point a so we join nasion and the point a and we know that pogonion lies here so here is our pogonion so next line is from the point a to the pogonion point a to the pogonion so if i extend it here we find an angle here this angle is the angle of convexity so this angle is the angle of convexity so the average value average value of this is zero degrees means they will kind of these lines will overlap and the range is from minus 8.5 degrees to 10 degrees so this is our normal value which we find in the normal people okay now let me make this neat again so that we can see few cases here so let's suppose the maxilla is positioned forward okay so now our point a lies here so initially it was here at this green dot but now it lies here so now when we join the pogonion pogonion and the point a point a okay and this blue line so we get an angle here this is a greater angle that means if the maxilla is positioned forward you will get a positive angle okay now let's remove it again and we'll see one more case oops i made a mistake anyways i'll just draw it again so initially it was from nasion to point a because our point a was here and this was our initial angle okay now if the mandible is forwardly placed like this the angle will decrease or it will be a negative angle let's see how 
So now our pogonion is somewhere here. Initially it was here. So now this would be the point A because the maxilla is not forward. In this diagram I have shown it to be forward but actually the maxilla in this case is normally placed and the mandible is forward. So we'll join the A to the pog. Okay. And we have this initially. So we will get a negative angle. We'll get a negative angle because it's going you know this was the positive side and this is the negative side so we will get a negative angle so we studied that if the maxilla if the maxilla is forward maxilla is forward we'll get a positive angle positive angle and if the mandible is forward mandible is forward we'll get a negative angle therefore angle of convexity it reveals the convexity or the concavity of the skeletal profile. Next is the AB plane angle. So this is our third parameter. This is our third parameter. So we'll draw one line connecting the nasion and the pogonion. P-O-G. So this would be our first line connecting nasion and pogonion. And the second line will be connecting the point A to the point B. So this is our point A, we already know. But we don't know yet about the point B. So point B, it is the deepest point on the midline. It is the deepest point on the midline between the alveolar crest of the mandible and the mental process. So it is here. This is our point B. Because our mental process is somewhere here, which is the most inferior portion of the symphysis menti if i'm not wrong yeah it is the most inferior midline point on the mandibular symphysis so this is the menton and this is the alveolar crest alveolar crest is the highest portion of the alveolar bone so it is the deepest point in the midline between the alveolar crest and the mental process and it is also called as supramental it is also called the point b it is also called as supra supra mental because supra means above and mental means this mental process okay and we studied that point a was called as the subspinal subspinal sub means below and spinal here means a n s so we have to join point a and point b so we are joining point a and point b and we'll extend it and this angle this angle is the AB plane angle the mean value is minus 4.6 degrees and the range is from minus 9 to 0 degrees so the mean value is 4.6 degrees and the range is from minus 9 to 0 degrees so this AB plane angle, it indicates the maxillomandibular maxillo -mandibular relationship in relation to the facial plane. Now, in class 3 case, in class 3 case, we will get a positive angle. Okay. So, let us suppose this was our initial point B. Now, it shifted here. This is our new point B. So, we'll connect this. We'll connect this. Okay. So we might get a positive angle okay because this was our normal range and we studied that it is negative it is negative only okay the maximum we are getting in normal individual is zero degree so obviously when this line is going behind this so this would be a positive value now we study about the mandibular plane angle so as the name suggests we draw the mandibular plane and the fh plane as the name suggests, we draw the mandibular plane and we draw the FH plane. So we have to draw the mandibular plane and we have to draw the FH plane. FH plane. So in cephalometric analysis, our mandibular plane has certain variations. But when we are studying about the down analysis, this mandibular plane is a line connecting gonion, gonion and menton. So gonion it is a point which connects the mandibular plane. This is a mandibular plane with the ramen plane. 
with the ramal plane not ramal 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 uh, i don't know whatever ha huh? okay so this is our gonion g o and this is our menton m okay so this is our mandible plane oh my god what happened <laughs> anyways now we have to draw the fh plane and i tell you that we already know where fh plane is because it is a line joining the porion and the orbital i did not tell this before actually forgot it myself <laughs> anyway so um this is our um porion okay and this is our orbital orbital and we join these and we get a line and that is called as the fh plane so when you extend these two line they will meet somewhere and they will form an angle that is the mandibular plane angle so mean value is 21.9 degrees and the range is from 17 degrees to 28 degrees that is this is the normal findings so let me just extend this and the other thing also other line also and we get a an angle here this is the mandibular plane angle so if this angle is increasing okay if this angle is increasing we have a patient who is a vertical grower who is a vertical grower vertical grower let's see how oh my god vertical grower because the mandible will be shifted downwards if this angle has to increase oh my god i hate when the softwares don't work so this angle is increasing so the mandible is growing downwards so the patient is a vertical grower he is go- growing vertically okay now the next is the y axis or the growth axis a bracket here <laughs> okay so we draw cella gnathion line with the fh plane so cella is the midpoint of the pituitary fossa so this is our pituitary fossa and this is the point here so this is our cella represented by s and here we have our gnathion so gnathion is the most antero inferior point on the symphysis of the chin so we know that this is the symphysis of the chin and this gnathion it is the most antero inferior point antero inferior point on the symphysis of the chin and how do we find this point what we do actually we join the menton so here was our menton okay and here was our pogonion p o g so we join these two and then we draw a perpendicular so we get a point here that point is the gnathion gnathion okay represented by gn so i'm just going to write gn only gn okay i hope this is visible so we join the cella to the gnathion and we draw the fh plane so this was our fh plane we already know so we get an angle here that angle is the y axis okay now the mean value is 59 degrees and the range is from 53 to 66 degrees now if the patient has class 2 profile this angle will be larger than class 3 so let's say this angle is increasing so you will see that the vertical height of the patient is increasing because now in this case we have our gonion somewhere here okay so when we join these two lines let me take a different color i am really short of colors you know so this would be the new gonion so this angle is now increasing so if the vertical height of the patient is increasing this angle is increasing that is it indicates greater vertical growth of mandible so it indicates greater greater 
vertical vertical growth of mandible of mandible now if this angle is smaller than normal it indicates greater horizontal growth of mandible so let us suppose the angle is like this so it is decreasing angle so now the mandible will be somewhere here so it indicates greater horizontal growth of mandible okay we studied if the angle is increasing it indicates greater vertical growth and if the angle is decreasing we will have greater greater horizontal growth horizontal my horrible handwriting <laughs> growth 